Hello, hello, and welcome. My name is Jay, and I am your StriveScan facilitator for the Capital Area School Development Association Virtual College Fair. We are super excited to have you here, and we have some great schools that are going to be giving you some great information. Um, so while we get all of that started and while you're all getting signed on in, I just want to say welcome because we have some great schools here for you. Um, thank you all for joining us. We're super excited to get it started here. And before I pass it along over to our presenters, I have a couple of housekeeping items for us. So you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen at any time. That's gonna directly ask a question and will be shown to our presenters and they can answer those questions and type them back on to you. Don't worry because your camera and audio are completely off so we cannot see or hear you. Also, this is just one of many sessions. So after you follow up with this session, there are others tonight and some even tomorrow if you wanna register for those as well. And this presentation is being recorded. So it will be available within about one week at strivescan.com forward slash C-A-S-D-A-N-Y. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking here and bring up our first presenter here with University of Birmingham. Come on up. Hello everyone, so my name's uh, Ruth Foster and I'm the International Officer for the Americas from the University of Birmingham, which is located in the UK and not located in Alabama. Um, in, uh, let me just get my screens right, in the US. So you've got two UK universities kicking you off this evening um, and thank you so much for joining us. It's our evening, it's probably midday there for you guys. Um, so we're a Russell Group University, one of the bigger ones in the UK. We're probably fourth largest with a population of around 36,000 students. We have around 10,000 international students from 150 different countries and around 200 North American students currently studying with us. Um, it's around a 60% postgraduate population, around 40% undergraduate um, students that are currently with us. And we're is set in a really lovely suburban campus setting. We're the only UK mainland university to have our own train station and we're seventh in the British university and colleges spawned in the global um, top 100 of universities, so a well-ranking university here. We're really excited in 2022 to be hosting the Commonwealth Games um, and we're official partners of those games. We're hosting the squash, hockey and also the largest athlete, athletes village on our campus. Birmingham is the second largest city in the UK, so it's of London, so you're kind of benefiting in that way. And you can see on that map there, we're right in the centre of the UK. Um, you can get to over, I think, 90% of the UK within four hours from Birmingham, so we're really centrally located. It's about an hour and a half to London, the same to Manchester and about 30 minutes to our international airport to either get back home or explore the rest of Europe and what it has to offer. Around 48% of our students choose to stay in Birmingham after graduation. I think that really shows testament to um, the city and kind of where they wanna stay after. So we're broken into five different colleges, what we call them, so arts and law, engineering and physical sciences, life and environmental sciences, medical and dental sciences and social sciences. We have around 500 undergraduate courses and 324 postgraduate courses, so over 900-ish in total, and I can't fit all of those on one slide, so do take a look at our course offering and what we have available. The more popular ones with American students are our Shakespeare Institute, some of our medical courses, um, education, law is really popular with our Canadian students, so we've got a really good mixture of subject area to offer to you. Our campus and pretty much what a lot of students choose the University of Birmingham for because it is a really beautiful campus in the UK. We're set in that suburban setting um, but we do have that train station to make it really easy to get into the city centre as well as around the rest of the UK to see friends, family, colleagues, you know, placements, all of that. Um, we've invested over 600, um, the most recent kind of investment that's just opened is our brand new engineering building that opened last 
kind of month. So there's been a lot of exciting facilities on campus. We're around three miles outside the city centre and have our very own art museum, a geology museum with a dinosaur. So, um, concert hall, botanical gardens, um, and there really is a lot to offer our students with our campus setting. Accommodation, you're guaranteed in your first year. We have university accommodation. We work with partners to help that, as well as private accommodation, and they can be catered or self-catered. 24 hour security at our university is on annual the costs are around start around five thousand and sixty pounds that's around seven thousand and fifty four us dollars and go up from there you do have your own room you can choose to have an ensuite in that if you want to but it would be more expensive Numbers one, two and three are the university accommodation. You can see the clock tower there that's in the middle that was slightly more zoomed in on that last picture, but that gives you a bit more of a scale of the campus. Selly Oak is a really popular area for students to move out in in their second year um, and also for postgraduate students to live in as well as Harborn. So they're kind of like just outside the university, but very student centred. Applications to the UK, you have to apply through something called UCAS and you have five choices of subject to apply through. For postgraduate courses, we ask for a GPA starting of a 2.5 8 up to 3.3 APs, as well as an SATR or an ACT, and we also accept the IB diploma. Budgeting is really important, so we are FAFSA associated as well as kind of work with the Veterans Affairs GI Bill. You can work in the UK on a visa up to 20 hours to support your um, budgeting and things like that. And you can work full time out of, um, out of term time and things like that. And that's pretty much my contact details there. Please get in touch. Um, I'd love to hear from you. We've got loads of great content on our social media site, so follow up there. Um, but thank you ever so much for joining us today. And I'll hand back to Jay. Thank you ever so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ruth. We are going to bring up our second presenter, which leads Art University here. Go ahead and take it away, Becky. Thank you. Awesome. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, so um, hi everybody. My name is Becky. I work at Leeds Arts University, also in the UK, um, like Ruth at the University of Birmingham. So um, I'm based in the city of Leeds. So we are in the north of the UK. We're about two hours away from London on the train. And similarly to Birmingham, it's kind of like in the centre of the UK. So really good location for exploring um, the rest of the country and the rest of Europe as well, if that's something that you're interested in. Now, um, we do only teach the arts. So if you're not an artsy student here tonight, um, then please feel free to just ignore me for the next few minutes. But if you are interested in the arts, then um, you've come to the right place. So studying the arts in the UK, we think is a fantastic idea because you, know, you get such a high quality of education across the board. But for the arts specifically, you know, the UK has got such a rich culture and heritage, some fantastic museums and galleries. Um, and, you know, we've produced some really, really famous artists, musicians, filmmakers, writers, and I'm sure you've all heard of plenty of them. But there's a reason for that, we think, and it's because of the inspiration um, and the lovely environment that you would be studying in. So as I mentioned, the city of Leeds is where we're based. We're the third largest city in the UK. So um, we're certainly a big city, but we do feel quite small and quite friendly um, when you're in the city centre. Um, it's really safe. It's really diverse. You know, we've got loads of communities from all over the world and it really is a creative hub as well. You know, it's very cultural. We've got, um, we've got things like theatre, ballet, opera loads of cinemas, loads of lovely restaurants, and just loads of fun stuff for students to do. And again, particularly for art students, it's a really nice place to soak up some inspiration. It's also very good value for money living in Leeds as well. And certainly it's cheaper than if you were to live in London, for example, um, the cost of living is considerably cheaper. So if finance is something that's important to you, then somewhere up north like Leeds is something to consider. 
And um, just going off on a tangent slightly, but um, as Ruth mentioned, um, we do we offer FAFSA as well here at Leeds Arts University. So again, if finance is something that's an issue for you, then um, we could be quite affordable and you could potentially get that loan as well. So Leeds Arts University, we are a specialist uni. We only teach the arts and we're a really unique environment. You know, it's very creative. If you walk down any of the corridors at any given time, you know, there's students that are like filming a movie somewhere or painting a mural on one of the walls or practicing for a fashion show or something. Um, so it really is a very inspirational place to be. And it's just really fun as well. So um, if you're really passionate about a particular area of the arts, then the likelihood is that we teach it and that there's fellow students and professors here that are very passionate about it as well. So we recently won um, the number one award at the What Uni Student Choice Awards for student support. And that just is because we are quite a small university. Um, you know, students get lots of care and attention and you are treated as an individual. We've also got some very famous alumni such as Damien Hurst who hopefully you might have heard of. Um, he is one of the highest paid living artists and he studied here at Leeds Arts Uni. So we're very, very proud of that. Just a couple of pictures here, as you can see in the um, top left corner is just a shot of Leeds. So we are a really cool city. You know, we've got some awesome architecture, some really old, beautiful buildings, but then some very, very modern construction as well. And our two campus buildings, we've got one Victorian lovely building at the top here, which is Vernon Street campus. And then the bottom picture is our um, Blenheim Walk campus, which is where undergraduate and postgraduate students would be based. So just a quick um, idea of the courses on offer. So we've got Foundation Diploma, which is a one year course, which is um, optional, really. Um, for US students, you wouldn't usually need to take that course. Um, we've got an undergraduate. Um, huge undergraduate offering um, from everything from fine art to um, some quite specific courses like comic and concept art, which is really popular in the US. Um, a popular music performance course, which basically teaches students to be a pop star and be successful in the music industry. Um, and then things like photography, graphic design, um, quite a broad range really. So please do take a look at our website if you are interested. And our undergraduate courses are three years long. So we've got a video here, I won't show you that because um, it's a bit too long. But the main reasons why we think it's a good idea to study at our university is the exposure to the industry that you will get. You're taught by practicing artists, so you would benefit from their real world experience and their contacts. There's lots of opportunities to exhibit your work, both within the city, but also internationally through competitions, um, answering open calls, that kind of thing. And then at the end of the third year at Leeds Arts University, you would exhibit your work um, to the public and we would invite the local community, but also potential employers to come and take a look at your work. Um, the whole uni just turns into a big open air gallery, which is really, really cool. As I mentioned, Leeds is a great base from which to explore the rest of the UK and the rest of Europe. There's some really cool creative companies in Leeds and we've got some great links with the local industry as well. We have a lot of visiting professionals come and teach our students. And then um, we are a really internationally focused city where hopefully you would feel at home. So I will wrap it up there um, and I'll pop my contact details in the chat box if anybody would like to ask any questions later on. So thank you, I'll hand you back over to Jay. Awesome, thank you so much, Becky. Really appreciate that there. And yes, just as a reminder to anyone who has any questions, that Q&A button is available um, to ask questions to any of our schools at any time. So we're gonna bring up our third presenter here, Manhattanville College. Jennifer, go ahead and take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Jen Klankoff and I'm the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions. Thank you for joining me. I'm just gonna share my screen. Right. And I do just want to add um, that my colleague, Megan Testoni, um, the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions, is in the chat or in the Q&A. So if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, she's more than happy to answer them for you. So to give you a little background on Manhattanville College, we are a small private liberal arts institu institution um, founded in 1841. 
We're both co-educational and non-denominational, and we're located in Purchase, New York, which is in Westchester County. We're 30 minutes north of New York City, so I always tell our students they get the best of both worlds. They have a closed private campus, but then the city and all of its opportunities is only 30 minutes away. We are a smaller institution. We have about 1,600 undergraduates and 1,000 graduate students, but they come from all over the world. Our students come from 35 different states and 40 different countries. Our student to faculty ratio is about 11 to one with an average class size of 19. Um, so I can guarantee that your professors will know your name and they'll know how to help you succeed in college. Um, we are located on a 100 acre campus uh, with four residence halls and we guarantee housing all four years, which is really nice. Um, so you're always guaranteed a place to stay at Manhattan though. These are all of our academic programs. We have about 50 academic majors and you can also minor at any of these areas listed. As you'll see, we're broken up into different areas of study. We do offer four plus one programs for those looking to accelerate getting their undergraduate and graduate degree. Those are in the business and education areas. We also have a brand new nursing program that we're really excited about. This is our second year with our nursing program. We have brand new facilities right on our campus and additional certification in holistic nursing. We also have a self-design major. So if you have a unique interest you don't see listed, you can create your own major of study at Manhattan Bell. I'll also add that you'll get an advisor in every area of study that you pursue. So even if you double major and have a minor, you'll have three advisors making sure that you're meeting requirements, finding internships, and getting the most out of the program. And speaking of internships, our Center for Career Development is really there to help you in obtaining these opportunities um, while in college and also helping you find job opportunities when you graduate. They help with resume review, cover letter building. They also host career and internship fairs right on our campus. This is just a short list of the many opportunities we offer. We have over 650 internship opportunities in total. MasterCard is our next door neighbor. PepsiCo is around the corner. And within New York City, we have Madison Square Garden, MTV, CNN, and so much more dependent on your major and your career interests. Outside of academics, we do have athletics. We have 23 Division III athletic teams. Our mascot is the Valiant. He looks like a knight. Um, here you'll see a list of our men's and women's sports. Our newest edition is women's rugby. We also have intramural club sports if you're looking to play a sport, but not necessarily make the commitment of being on a team. In addition to that, we have about 50 student-run clubs. Here is a list of what we offer. What's nice about Manhattanville is it only takes six students to start a club. So if you have a unique passion you don't see listed, you and five friends can start your own club and you'll get the proper support and funding to do so. We also offer a multitude of study abroad opportunities. We have about 100 in total, including four direct exchange programs. They are with schools in the UK, France, Japan, and Ireland. What direct exchange means is your financial aid will transfer, so what you pay for Manhattanville, you pay for the partnering institution, making it a really seamless transition. We also have additional opportunities um, with our cooperative and independent programs. Um, for our students to utilize. Um, and most students really go their junior year for a semester, but you can go for a full year if that's what you would like to do. And this is our application information. Um, we're rolling admissions, we accept applications throughout the year, and we are still accepting applications for fall 2021. We have two deadlines, December 1st, which is a non-binding. Um, it just gives you a decision sooner. And then our priority deadline is March 1st. We're a member of the Common App, and we also have our own personal application on our website. These are our requirements. For our first year students, we ask for the application and $50 fee, personal essay, two letters of recommendation, one from a counselor and a teacher of your choosing, and lastly, the official high school transcript. We are test optional except for our education majors, so you do not need to submit test scores unless you would like to. For our nursing applicants, the requirements are very similar. We just ask that your essay really be about why you would like to become a nurse. For international students who may be on the call, the only difference is that we allow two academic letters of recommendation, and we do ask for a form of English proficiency. You'll see listed what we allow, TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, as well as a 550 on the critical reading section of the SAT. And important, here are our tuition and fees. Our total cost is about 55,000 per year. 
but don't get discouraged by that number. 98% of our students are receiving some sort of financial aid and paying significantly less than that above cost. And in addition to financial aid, we offer merit scholarships. When a student applies to Manhattanville College, they're automatically evaluated for their scholarship. Um, if admitted, they are eligible anywhere from ten dollars to $25,000, or for our nursing students, fifteen dollars to $20,000, which makes college a lot more affordable. And here you will have my contact information. If you do have any follow-up questions, please feel free to email or call me. Um, I'm always happy to assist. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. Really appreciate that there. Awesome. We are going to move along on over to Eckerd College. Come on up. Hello, thank you, thank you. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Do, 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 you present. All right, I'm also starting my timer because I will go over the six minutes if I don't have a timer. So, hello everyone, my name is Dylan Cassidy. I am uh, the Assistant Director of Admission here at Eckerd College. I'm a native New Yorker myself, so I like to say I know a thing or two about what it's like to uh, go to college from relatively far away. Um, but let me talk about Eckerd College um, briefly. So we are a small liberal arts and science college located here in St. Petersburg, Florida. To give you an idea of where that is, it's around the Tampa Bay area. We're only about 30 minutes away from the Tampa International Airport, so it is doable for students coming from uh, out of state. Most students will fly um, to Eckerd College when traveling here. Um, in fact, about 80% of our students come from outside of the state. Uh, and yes, we are located on the Gulf Coast, uh, which students will take full advantage of, but I will get into that later. Um, so here is a picture of our geographic reach. So you'll see here that most of our students, like I said, are traveling from outside of the state of Florida. Um, as of recently, we actually represent 49 of 50 states. We represent 41 countries in our campus body. And uh, almost 90% of our students do live on campus for all four years. Uh, we do guarantee housing for all four years. So if you are deciding Eckerd could be the right fit, uh, you are guaranteed housing years if you choose. Uh, some students opt to live off campus. Um, on average, our students travel about a thousand miles away from home to attend Eckerd. Um, so let's talk briefly about academics. So Eckerd College, um, we are on a 414 academic calendar. What that means is you take four classes in the fall and then you take one class during winter term. Uh, winter term is a three-week class during the month of January and then students will take four classes in the spring. Now, the reason I talk about winter term, uh, winter, term is a, winter term is a really popular time where students will um, either study abroad during a short-term three-week program, um, or they can get some hands-on research done during the month of January. I think it's especially popular for students coming from out of state because some students don't wanna spend their time in uh, upstate New York in the month of January. So students will often be on campus during that time uh, taking some sort of course. However, during our first year of college, that short term class falls during the month of August during what we call winter term. So your first year of college, it's actually on a one four four calendar um, and students will often will all first year students will take part in a three week intense orientation where you'll participate in academic coursework. We have a campus activity going on almost every single night. You have conversations with your faculty mentor during that time, and you even get to do some community service, but it's our way of helping you acclimate to college. Most students who come to Eckerd, oftentimes they are the only person they know going there. So it, it takes a little time to get used to it, to meet some friends. So autumn term is often a great time for students to meet other people and upperclassmen do not arrive on campus until the first week of September. So for those final three weeks of August, uh, you have the campus to yourself to figure out a lay of the land. Here is a list of our academic majors and minors. Anything you, th you see with an asterisk next to it, it is a minor. Um, some popular majors, although all of these are quite popular. Um, we are known for our marine science program. We have a great environmental studies, animal studies. We have international business, international relations and global affairs, business management, um, all different types of majors. We've recently got a two plus two theater program as well, and as, as well as a lot of pre-professional programs such as pre-law, pre-medical, pre-veterinarian. 
So here is a picture of our campus. So yes, we are located on the beach. Um, our motto here is think outside. We take that very figuratively and literally. Our students enjoy spending the time outdoors. Uh, we are a pet friendly campus. That's why there is a dog on that picture right there. Um, so uh, yeah, students will take full advantage of the outdoors for leisure and for academic purposes. So we do have one of the country's most comprehensive waterfront programs. Now I know what you're thinking, you see this and you hear Florida and I, I get it, you know, uh, our students do take full advantage of the beach for uh, Sundays when they need some time to relax. We also use it for academic opportunities. There are some environmental classes that have been known to rent out 20 kayaks and take them to the natural bird preserve across the river uh, where they can examine those birds in a very hands-on setting. So we have an emphasis on hands-on approach to learning our average class size is about 18 students. We have 1,800 students total. So we're a small school and we um, pride ourselves on our students getting to know professors on a personal level. If you're interested in applying um, for those who are going into their senior year, our application opens up in August. If you submit your application by November 15th, you'll be considered an early action application. Um, we look at your official high school transcript. Uh, we are test optional, so you're not required to submit the SAT or ACT scores. We'll look at a letter of recommendation as well as a college of essay. I have about 30 seconds left, uh, so I'd like to finish off by, if you'd like to read more about us, I would recommend checking out the Colleges That Change Lives book. It highlights 40 colleges that just do it differently. Um, we have about a 10 page chapter in ours that uh, starts off by saying Eckerd might seem like a perfect spot for an easy college career. Four years marked by the sun, surf and sand, but if you're looking for a vacation, you should enroll elsewhere. I think that's the most important part of Eckerd is that uh, students do enjoy the outdoors, but um, also if you're looking for a comprehensive liberal arts program that will encourage you to think outside the box and challenge yourself academically, um, we could be a good fit for you, but don't let the beach fool you. All right, I went over time. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Dylan. We are gonna move right along now to our final college of the evening, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Come on up, Mike. All right, thank you so much. There we go. Whoop. Uh, so my name is Mike Kalinowski. I am with the University of Massachusetts Lowell, UMass Lowell. Um, here's a nice picture of our East Campus, which is our resident residential campus. We technically have three campuses because we used to be two different schools we'll be back in the day. Uh, then we combined to become uh, one school that was UMass Lowell. Um, so a great thing about us is our location. Um, it's always something I like to brag about. Uh, we're just uh, less than a half an hour outside of Boston, about uh, just under three hours outside of Albany. So uh, just head east on the Mass Pike and get to uh, UMass Lowell. The great thing about us is we're a very historical community, uh, one of the first planned cities in the United States, very uh, diverse community as well. Uh, so, you know, our, our city represents um, people from all over the world, which also reflects the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Our students represent all 50 states and over 120 different countries. Um, our campus is pretty close to our downtown area where there's tons of shopping, restaurants, coffee shops, very lively art scene. Uh, you'll find a lot of our students down there on the weekends and after class and stuff like that. A lot of them hold jobs or present their art in galleries down there. Um, being close to Boston, we have tons of opportunities for research, uh, co-ops, internships. A lot of our students have jobs, um, you know, after school uh, in the Boston area. So really set you up well for uh, meeting professionals while you're still a student, but also you have a massive, um, you know, hub of just jobs and opportunities once you do graduate. We're also fairly close to oceans, beaches, and mountains, uh, just under an hour from the beaches, probably an hour and a half to the mountains in New Hampshire. Um, so definitely get the outdoorsy feel as well, even though Lowell is a city. So by the numbers, uh, we're the seventh fastest public, fa seven fast, sorry, seven fastest growing public school in the United States. Uh, you know, we started off as a smaller school. We've grown into a medium to large size school. Um, you know, we're adding majors and uh, students from all over the world and all across the country every single year. Um, 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Um, you know, we have over 300 different opportunities for study abroad, over 275 different clubs and organizations that you can join. Um, and we have, we're at Division I uh, sports with 17 uh, varsity Division I programs. 
As far as the academic numbers, those are just averages. Uh, the average uh, GPA is a 3.65, average SAT of a 1240, and an average ACT of a 26. Typically, I tell students we're just looking for strong B average students. So anywhere above a 3.0 and getting yourself to a 3.3 set yourself up, set yourself up very well for success. And we're test optional for every single major on our campus. As far as the specifics within academics, we represent 11,000 students and over 120 uh, academic programs for undergrad. We also offer 70 graduate level degrees, including a four plus one bachelor's to master's program for uh, pretty much all of our master's degrees. So if you wanna stay with us and get a higher level degree, then you can absolutely do so. And then our average class size is about 19, 20 students. We do have six academic colleges, just the way we like to organize our majors. They are the College of Engineering, the College of Sciences, the School of Business, the College of Health Sciences, the College of Education, and the College of Fine Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Uh, we do have an honors college, which is open to all of our majors and all of our students. And I already kind of talked about that bachelor's to master's program. A big thing about UMass Lowell is our hands-on learning. Uh, we're really trying to get our students real life experiences while they're still a student. The big thing we always hear is, you know, all these entry-level jobs somehow requiring experience. How am I supposed to do that? Uh, we try to do that in a number of different ways for our students. So uh, we offer co-op programs, which is uh, really intense hands-on experiences in a business or company in your field. You're gonna gain some uh, money, you're gonna gain some experience, get to network, and also does award you some course credit internships all across the board for every single major or 300 different study abroad programs and uh, not just the you know traditional go and attend classes for one semester or one year you can do shorter bursts so we offer two week four week and six week programs during the summer break um, you can do stuff like service learning study abroad opportunities not necessarily just being in the classroom um, we do offer clinical and practical experiences, especially for like our health and education students. So getting to learn with actual patients and actual students while you're still an undergrad. Service learning, so keeping up community service. Um, and then we're a big research university as well. So uh, it's for our undergrad students. It's not just for grad students. So if, you're, uh, if you hear about an interesting research topic that our professors are doing, it's very easy to get involved with those research projects. As far as admissions, so if you're thinking about applying, we do have three application deadlines. Early action one is required for nursing. All of the majors, you have the choice of any of the three. Uh, early action two is January 5th and regular decision is February 5th. Uh, we are on the Common App. We're also on the Coalition application. We also have our own online application. We don't have a preference. Um, you know, we've been no test since 2015. I know it's been a big topic. Uh, in college admissions this past year. Uh, we plan on staying no tests for uh, the far future here. So uh, definitely feel free to apply with that no test option. Um, and yeah, that's all I have. So thank you very much. Awesome. So I'm gonna actually ask now all of our presenters to come back on here and I've got a question for you. Let me bring that up. So we'll go in the exact same order in which you all presented, but what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Uh, University of Birmingham, what do you have to say here? Thank you. Um, so it's probably very different to applying to the UK to applying to the US. So we're gonna focus on UK. Um, no kind of the entry requirements were very specific a lot of us are not test optional so we don't have that flexibility to kind of us universities so just really figure out our entry requirements first or reach out to one of us because that's what we're here for we want to support you guys and we want you guys to have the information that you need so please reach out and my next point really is look into the kind of the course so look into the modules because quite a few universities offer the same course but that's how you'll differentiate the difference between courses so we call them modules i think you call them courses so have a look at that and see what that's about but i think that's my best advice and um, thanks got it okay and leeds arts university what do you have to add here yeah, thank you, Jay. Um, yeah, so my advice would be similar to Ruth's, you know, just do loads of research. Um, make sure that it's the right course for you, but also the right location and the right country. Obviously, we're in the UK. 
um, studying here is very different to the US. Um, so it just honestly depends on what you're looking for. Um, ways you can do that is obviously attending these kind of sessions. Um, don't be afraid to get in touch with the universities. I think students can be quite worried that they might look unsure, but we love when people get in touch with us. You know, it shows such maturity. Um, we really love that. And we also have the option on our website and on many other unis um, where you can talk to current students too. So ask them about their experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Manhattanville College. Hi, everyone. I would say to really consider the location of the school that you want to attend and think about how far away you want to be from home, but also think about the major you want to pursue in your career goals. Um, for example, Manhattanville is located near a city, so that would be really good for somebody interested in going to business, communication, the arts. So really think about the area that you're looking to study and when studying and when applying. And I do love that idea too, of just reaching out to your admissions counselor with any questions. We're always here to assess, we're your advocate. So please feel free to reach out. Awesome, Eckerd College. Right, so advice I usually give, this might sound very broad, but I usually tell students to just go with your gut, um, I, you know, I, I echo what all the other colleges just said as far as doing research, but ultimately, I, deep down, I think you know which school is the right fit for you. So oftentimes, students who are the happiest I've seen usually follow their gut, and it's usually the school that you can't stop thinking about. It's usually the school you can't stop talking to your friends about or um, you know, showing pictures on social media. That's usually the right school for you. So I say go with your gut and your college search. Um, and still do tons of research. Great. And University of Massachusetts, what do you have here? Yeah, I would just say to uh, don't be afraid to be open and look into schools that you normally wouldn't think of looking into just because you know maybe friends or family are telling you to look into a school. Maybe try to find some schools on your own. And um, you know whether it's in person or virtual, definitely try to do some sort of communication or touring of the campus if you can. Great. So we're going to go one more question, and it's a little bit more of a fun question here, but what is your favorite event or tradition that happens on campus um, at your school? So University of Birmingham, do you have anything there? Um, so I'm absolutely obsessed with Christmas. I am a bit like a Christmas elf. Um, and Birmingham has one of the biggest European, I think it is the biggest European Christmas market in Birmingham. Um, so I really would, yeah, get involved in that. We have loads of activities on campus. We have like winter balls, we have um, a fairground that comes in and loads of stuff like that. It's just a really nice kind of chill down point before everyone goes either home to family or off to do other stuff. So it's a really fun time of year on campus and in the city. So that's my favorite bit, definitely. Awesome, very cool. Leeds Arts University. Um, yeah, so mine is, um, I touched upon it in my presentation, but at the end of every academic year, our university turns into a big open air gallery, basically. All of our graduating students will exhibit their work and all of the local community um, all comes and we just celebrate the students, we look at their work, um, and it's just really fun. Um, it's really awesome time. Great, awesome. Manhattanville College? Every year we host an international bazaar. Um, I mentioned during our presentation that we have students from about 40 different countries represented on our campus. So what we do is every year we have a bazaar where there's food from every single country. Our students, they show us their fashion and they sing, they dance, they do comedy. And it's just a great time to come together and really represent everyone's uh, backgrounds and celebrate it. Very cool, very cool. Eckerd College. Right. Something we offer at the end of four years, I mentioned in my presentation, we are a pet friendly college. Uh, so at the end of four years, students have the option to graduate with their pets. So we have our separate pet commencement. Uh, you can actually Google it, Google like uh, Eckerd College pet graduation. So students will get really crafty, get little graduation caps for their pet turtle, snake, dog, cat. Um, and because you're pet went through your college experience too, they deserve some sort of recognition. So they get like a diploma. It's really funny and strange and amazing. So I think that's a unique uh, tradition we do here. Yeah, definitely unique. Awesome. Uh, University of Massachusetts, what do you have? Yeah, in the springtime, we hold a uh, carnival. It's really just a big uh, outdoor barbecue with 
uh, lawn games and uh, obstacle courses and stuff like that. Live music. It's really just a great way to kind of cap off the whole year, you know, celebrate all your accomplishments and get ready for finals. Awesome. Well, we are going to wrap it up here. So I just wanted to say thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you to all of those who watched us live here today. Thank you to anybody else who has been watching the recording after it's available. And thank you to all of our panelists for giving us all that great information. When you close out this window, there is going to be a short four question survey. We at StriveScan would love to have any feedback that you have for us. Also, this was just one of many sessions, more happening this evening here in the US and more happening tomorrow as well. And in about one week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as only any of our other sessions recording at strivescan.com forward slash C-A-S-D-A-N-Y. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you.